Okay, as uh, you guys know from my emails, I uh, upgraded the uh, Micron 3 computer to Micron 4, and then I purchased the uh, GPS module for it. And what I wanted to do, or what I want to do is um, do these like instructional videos about the, uh, the data acquisition, because uh, all that data won't do us any good unless we can interpret it. And uh, I've been reading up on it, and I just wanted to get you guys up to speed so that when we start talking about this stuff, when we start doing our runs, and we start getting some of these reports, uh, they'll make sense to you. So anyway, um, I've been creating these uh, little little primers called uh, Race Studio Analysis uh, 101, and I'll do 102, 103 as I see the need. Um, YouTube only lets me uh, have 10 minutes to record, so if this spills over, I'll do you know uh, Race Studio 2 Analysis 102, and um, so on and so forth. Anyway, let's get started. Um, so this is the uh, screen here. Once I've uh, pulled down data from the uh, from the cart computer, I download it onto the home computer, and this is what I end up with. As you can see here, some of our Fontana runs, uh, but they don't do us any good because there's no GPS data there. So I uh, went to the AIM website and I pulled down a, uh, a run from a um, cart uh, over in Germany, running on the uh, Nuremberg ring. Uh, cart track. So anyway, let's bring that session up. Let me get rid of this thing. So this is the screen most of you have probably seen before. The one that gives you your uh, lap times. Um, your uh, fastest lap is what they call the reference lap. And then anything over that is a percentage over this reference lap. So like um, uh, this one right here is the uh, well first fastest lap second fastest lap, third fastest lap, um, actually third fastest lap here. Anyway, you get the picture. So this is what you guys are used to seeing. Uh, we've probably seen this one before in the past too. This is the one that also gives you your lap time and then gives you a uh, like a histogram of uh, the uh, differences from the previous lap and how you compared. You know, So really what you want to do here, we always try to make sure we stayed you know, right in here to the you know, we were consistent with our lap times. Didn't want these things going all over the place. So those are probably the two reports you guys are most familiar with. Um, I'll explain a little bit about this thing. I mean, uh, we're not all going to be experts on this, but I want you guys to get at least get an understanding of how how the data acquisition works. Uh, like down here is the um, the different laps, and uh, <clears throat> recording two things here: recording uh, GPS speed and engine RPM. And you can click on one of these. You know, as you want to see a lap, you can click on it, and it'll show you highlights of that lap. All right, let's go into the uh, meat and potatoes of the thing here and um, look at the um, GPS. All right, so there's a, a lap around the go-kart track. And um, what this thing's showing <coughs> is over here, it shows you your track, it says north and east, and then you can, you know, as you manipulate or move things around, you can, uh, let me see here, you can, uh, you know, do all kinds of things like that. Anyway, interesting stuff. Um, anyway. Um, what you see here is uh, uh, color bars, and what these represent are uh, speed at various portions of the track. So um, let me bring up the legend here. Um, anything in the red is over 180 uh, kilometers per hour. This is a European track, so uh, you know the, the mileage is in kilometers per hour, and the temperatures and things, everything's metric, you know, Celsius, whatnot. Um, so anyway, you know, you got your, uh, uh, as you can see by the colors here, here's your fastest portion of the track because you're hitting over 180 kilometers. And then uh, as he starts to slow down, you can see it goes down to, uh, you know, 140 to 160 Ks through setting up for that little S turn here. And then he takes the S at about 120 to 140 Ks. And like this hairpin over here looks like, well, here, you can actually see a, a uh, what is it here? 90. It looks like between uh, 80 and 100 uh, kilometers per hour is the, uh, the speed he, he took that corner there, which uh, is pretty cool stuff. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting is this. Um, let's see here. I can do this right. There we go. Um, now I can actually see um, track elevation. This is pretty cool here too. So you can see, you know, this is the. Uh, I guess this is the lowest portion of the track. I don't know. I'm, I'm still learning this stuff here. So anyway, 
you know, we can uh, slice it, dice it, look at it in many different ways, which is uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, let's see if we can get back to the way we were here. There we go. Um, so anyway, there's the uh, <coughs> the uh, what the GPS does for you. Now, one of the other cool things it does, um, it uh, you can overlay laps, so you can see what uh, what happens per lap. But first of all, let me back up a little bit and discuss uh, what how the data acquisition works. Um, data acquisition works by uh, um, channel inputs. So the computer receives. Um, let me show you here. Uh, various channels for the, the the input sensors. So you got a channel for uh, engine uh, RPM. You got a channel for speed. You got a channel for uh, exhaust gas temperature. You know these are all individual channels. Which this is I don't know why he does this. This thing speed. Um, the way they used to do speed is they put um, little sensors on the on the uh, rear axle or the front spindles, and then there'd be a magnetic pickup that would uh, pick up the uh, in, the the wheel speed for the rear or the front. But with GPS, you now got all this other uh, uh, data channels that it's picking up so you got like you know your uh, GPS speed uh, I think this one tells it how many uh, satellites it's acquired um, this is the um, lateral acceleration uh, uh, channel uh, longitudinal acceleration um, slope this is how we were able to get the angle the uh, the the uh, track height at different portions um, the route of the vehicle uh, heading, the route of the vehicle compared to geographical north, and then a, um, a yaw speed in degrees per second, which is pretty cool stuff because <clears throat> these are, <coughs> excuse me, these are again uh, uh, data channels that it has that it's getting fed. There's also another thing called remember this gyro thing here. We'll go back. We'll, we'll cover this thing here. Another thing that it can do is called math channels. These aren't actual physical channels, but they're calculated channels, which is pretty cool. So now we can take like, uh, and again, I've been reading some of these formulas. Like, I can. There's a way you can you can calculate um, uh, slip angles. So you can tell if the uh, if the front end slides, the back end slides. If you're drifting, based on uh, some of these um, some of these settings here, like the uh, the gyro, will it it, uh, it gives it yaw angles. So it tells tells the uh, the you know what. Uh, angles the cart is achieving when it's going into a turn based in relationship to where it is on the earth. So by creating a math channel by taking uh, um, again there's several formulas you use here and you incorporate some of these channels and you're able to come up with a uh, with a, a, a lateral G's. So the thing doesn't, even, doesn't have an accelerometer but yet it can calculate lateral G's. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, anyway so those are uh, channels, math channels and the regular channels. And again, that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the, uh, I think this is the uh, the uh, engine uh, RPM channel, and this is the uh, GPS speed channel. But anyway, what's cool here is we can uh, overlay laps. Let me see here. I'm getting into eight minutes, so I got a couple more minutes to go, and I'll wrap this one up and continue on another another uh, another session here. But what's again, what's really cool here is now I can do this right. Yeah, we can uh, overlay laps. So here I've got my fast lap is uh, uh, the green one and then uh, next slowest lap or slow lap is like the orange one so now if we blow this up you can see what was done here uh, on this corner so here's your fast lap right here and you can see where he uh, I guess he apexes it a little bit late and then he's and then he comes out and yeah, there's a trajectory but then for the uh, slow lap, um, orange here looks like he apexes a little bit earlier, seems like. And then either that or he's carrying too much speed, and you can see how he drifts out, and uh, he, the trajectory he takes here. So the this is pretty cool. Uh, so now you can really analyze stuff by looking at uh, you know your line in detail. Like, well, he really blows it here. Let me see. It's a European track, so we're clockwise. So we're going this way. Um, so you can see on the green here, look at how he uh, apexes correctly, and on the uh, the slow lap, look at that. He, he swings out kind of wide, and he's all messed up here for the next section here, because now he's looks like he's way off here because he drifts out, and he's able to take the correct line here. So um, in the next session, we'll cover uh, how we can get into more details of why this happened.